today on Rappler. Argentine Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio is elected the 266th Pope, the first Jesuit Latin American Pope in history. Uh, you know, the, the reason why, why it's kind of unthinkable because we Jesuits, uh, it's part of our formation and spirituality not to aspire uh, a position in the church. A Jesuit in the Philippines says he was incredulous to hear one of their own had become Pope. Philippines keeps its peacekeepers in the Golan Heights despite last week's kidnapping of 21 Filipinos. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The conclave of cardinals elect a new pope this morning, 2.05 a.m. Manila time. The new pope emerges from the balcony, but few in the crowd know him. He is the cardinal from Argentina, Jorge Mario Bergoglio, and he assumes the name of a saint famous for his humility and poverty, Francis. Paterno S. Maquel reports. It's the end of a historic conclave, but no one sees it coming. For the first time, cardinals elect a low-key Jesuit Latin American to lead the world's 1.2 billion Catholics. The 76-year-old Jorge Mario Bergoglio, former Archbishop of Buenos Aires, addresses a church that faces calls for transparency, simplicity, and greater attention to developing countries. In his speech, Pope Francis stuns the public with his humility. He chooses the name Francis, which many believe comes from St. Francis of Assisi, a 12th-century friar who shunned a privileged life and lived in poverty. The unassuming Francis begins his papacy by asking the public a favor. Adesso vorrei dare la benedizione, ma prima, prima vi chiedo un favore. Prima che il Vescovo benedica il popolo, vi chiedo che voi pregate al Signore perché mi benedica la preghiera del popolo chiedendo la benedizione per il suo Vescovo. Facciamo in silenzio questa preghiera di voi su di me. At the time of rising secularism, the Pope calls for love and mutual trust among Catholics. Preghiamo sempre per noi, l'uno per l'altro. Preghiamo per tutto il mondo, perché ci sia una grande fratellanza. The son of a rail worker, Francis is known for his humility and love for the poor. Religious writer Sergio Rubin describes him as a conservative at the level of doctrine and progressive on social issues. In an interview on Rappler's Talk Thursday, Loyola House of Studies Rector Father Joe Quilong-Quilong says Pope Francis will make a positive impact on developing countries. Quilong-Quilong recounts the Pope's reputation in Buenos Aires. Uh, he is known to live a very simple lifestyle. He refused to stay in the Archbishop's Palace in Argentina. He takes the public transportation. And right. even one time, I think uh, in one of the reports, he even cooks his own meals. So in a way, that's one way to connect with the ordinary people. Right. So in a way, uh, he, this sense of solidarity, you know, uh, that you know, he knows the conditions of the poor and the ordinary life. Pope Francis begins his papacy in the face of controversies like Vati Leaks. The challenge now for the first third world pope to keep the church simple and closer to people. Paterno is Makel Rappler, Manila. 
Loyola House of Studies Rector Father Joe Kilong Kilong says the election of a Jesuit Pope comes as a surprise. He says the Society of Jesus does not aspire for high positions in the church. Why, why it's kind of unthinkable because we Jesuits, uh, it's part of our formation and spirituality not to aspire uh, a position in the church. Right. Meaning Kilong Kilong says the first gesture of Pope Francis suggests a church reaching out to the world. The gesture of bowing down, no? bowing down before the crowds and asking the crowds to bless him and to pray for him before he gives the final blessing. And he mentioned about journeying with them. That connects with solidarity and, uh, and this uh, deep spirituality. Kilong Kilong says Pope Francis is also consistent about his focus on the Catholic identity. Church. So in a way, uh, we have a Pope who is very concerned in terms of the identity of a Catholic today. And in a fast-changing world, you know, identity is very important because without a clear identity, you can get lost. Right. Although the new pope has been described as conservative at the level of doctrine and progressive on social issues, his rejection of liberation theology remains controversial among left-leaning Argentines and Catholics. But Kilong Kilong says liberation theology developed as a response to, quote, the great structural injustice at the time. But things have changed now. Things have changed. And uh, in fact, later on, uh, even, even the Jesuits, uh, we realized that there were some problems in terms of really pushing uh, a, you know, a, a kind of a particular program, a political program, right, right. which is very much associated with liberation theology. Mm -hmm. And uh, we kind of realized that, you know, as Jesuits, as religious, or as, uh, you know, workers uh, of the church, uh, we are not experts in, uh, ma in political matters. Right. In the streets of Buenos Aires, drivers honk their horns in elation over the election of Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio. Latin Americans make up 40% of the world's Catholics. The 76-year-old Bergoglio was chosen on just the fifth ballot. He's said to have finished second when Pope Benedict XVI was elected in 2005. New York Cardinal Dolan gave an inside glimpse into the drama of the conclave, saying that when the tally reached the necessary 77 votes to make Bergoglio Pope, the Cardinals erupted in applause. Dolan says when Bergoglio accepted the huge responsibility, quote, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. The Dalai Lama congratulates the Argentinian Pope and lauds his decision to become the first pontiff to go by the name Francis. Pope Francis considers social outreach rather than doctrinal battles to be the essential business of the church. President Barack Obama says in a statement, quote, as a champion of the poor and the most vulnerable among us, he carries forth the message of love and compassion, and that in each other we see the face of God. Vatican watchers say in choosing Francis, the cardinals clearly decide they didn't need a young pope who would reign for decades, but rather a seasoned, popular, and humble pastor who would draw followers. Catholics in Argentina still remember his speech last year, accusing fellow officials of hypocrisy for forgetting that Jesus Christ bathed lepers and ate with prostitutes. Under Bergoglio's leadership, Argentinian's bishop issued a collective apology in October 2012 for the church's failures to protect its flock during the country's dirty war in the 1970s. His biographer, Sergio Rubin, says he is a staunch critic of the human rights violations of the dictatorship as well as leftist guerrillas. According to his biographer, Bergoglio personally saved two Jesuit priests who were kidnapped in 1976 for advocating liberation theology. Hackers claiming to be part of anonymous Philippines deface President Benigno Aquino's website to criticize his handling of the Saba conflict. The hackers post a message saying, quote, if you can't act on the issue as the Philippine president, at least do something as a, Filip a fellow Filipino. We are watching. In a statement, Presidential Communications Operations Office Secretary Herminio Coloma Jr. says, no further intrusions were made as the internal security protocols were activated. The president's staff regains control of the website within a few hours. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un oversees a live-fire artillery drill near the disputed sea border with South Korea. 
The yellow sea border is the site of bloody north-south clashes in the past and is seen as the prime location for another confrontation. It's not clear when Kim supervised the live fire drill. During the latest drill, the Korean Central News Agency reports, quote, shells intensively hit the imaginary targets of the enemy while the roar of the artillery pieces rocked heaven and earth. North Korea threatens war on South Korea in response to UN sanctions on its third atomic test and joint South Korea-US military maneuvers. South Korea dismisses the North's threats as a crude attempt to put, quote, psychological pressure on Seoul. On Thursday, South Korean Prime Minister Chung Hong-won urges troops in one of the islands near the sea border to prepare for any aggression from the North. The Philippines says it will keep its United Nations peacekeepers in the Golan Heights after Syrian rebels held 21 of them hostage last week. The UNDAF has been in the Golan Heights since 1974 to monitor a ceasefire between Syria and Israel. But senior UN diplomats say Syria's civil wars could prompt new withdrawals from the peacekeeping force. Canada, Japan and Croatia have withdrawn their contingents in recent months. Only the Philippines, Austria and India remain in UNDAF. On Wednesday, the UN cuts peacekeeper patrols and closes down some observation points. A senior UN diplomat says there's a risk they will all leave. If they all leave, then the mission is in definite crisis. Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number six, China's parliament names Xi Jinping president Thursday, formalizing its leadership of the world's second largest economy. The 59-year-old leader is elected for a five-year term but will hold the post for 10 years. While he has threatened to eradicate corruption, Xi may be compromised by reports his own family amassed millions of dollars in assets. At number eight, the world's largest ground-based observatory opens in Chile. The Atacama Large Millimeter Array, or ALMA, Space Observatory, is inaugurated Wednesday on a desert plateau 5,000 meters above sea level. ALMA's ultra-precise equipment can peer through the clouds and capture the faint glow and gas present in the formation of the first stars and possibly provide answers to questions about the universe. And at number nine, after announcing a new news feed look, Facebook is improving its timeline. It's a response to users' claims that the current timeline layout is sometimes hard to read. The new design will allow users to organize the About section, while applications like Flickster and Netflix will allow users to add movies they like or are currently watching. Instagram users can make their photo stream appear as a section on their timeline. Facebook's new timeline will roll out in the next few weeks. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories which have gotten the most votes on the mood meter. If you take a look at the 10 today, um, we've got the Pope. Six out of the 10 stories that moved Filipinos today had to do with Pope Francis. In fact, the story that's gotten the most number of votes on the mood meter is Pope Francis, known as the champion of the poor, 85% happy, 5% inspired, and a small 6% who say they don't care. The mood of the day, take a look at the green on the mood navigator. Today, most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Thursday, March 14th, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.